We're going to look at one more example where we strip back a preset and then bring the instrument to its initialized state. But this time we're going to do so in a much more methodical fashion so that we can learn a lot about this instrument. So this is what I've talked about before. Some people will encourage you to load up the most crazy presets you can find and then work your way backwards. And that might actually help you learn a lot. I like doing it the other way, but I'm just going to show you how this can be done and how you can start to learn some of the nuance and special features of any given instrument. So when you load up something like Diversion, it looks kind of complicated. And I think that's just because there's so many different knobs. But fundamentally, we see that we have our oscillators, we have some kind of filter module, and we have an amplitude envelope. So everything in between is sort of new. And that's maybe what makes this instrument special or unique. And we're going to have to figure out some of those things here. And we'll be able to learn some of those things by stripping back a preset. So here's the sound. So a lot going on. It's a little bit loud. I'm just going to go ahead and turn that down first. And if you remember, the first place we need to go is to the effects section. We want to turn those off. I see that I have a control for effects up here. I can click that and I can turn the effects off. But that doesn't mean that it's deleted any of the effects that are on the instrument. So I think by default, I'd want the ability to put effects onto the sound. I'd probably want that on. And instead, I'm going to come down here to the bottom. We have our modulation section here where we have LFOs, envelopes, and multi-staged envelopes. And then we have an arpeggiator and like a trance gate, more or less. And then in the effects section, here's where our effects are. And we can see that the chorus is the first thing in this chain. It's loaded up. It's enabled. It's turned on. We can load up specific presets for each of these modules. We can exchange modules by right-clicking. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to want to turn these off. But what I find so interesting about this is that we have the ability to place effects in three different places at the bus one level, at the bus two level, and then post the buses pre your final level fader here. And that's something a little bit different. Um, and I'm wondering now, well, how does this bus scheme work? That's not something I'm used to seeing in a synthesizer. It's something I'm used to doing and mixing. So that's going to be what I try to tackle next. This is what I want to figure out about the instrument. So if I'm playing my sound and I turn off bus one, is that going to change the sound in any way? Doesn't seem to be. If I go into bus two and I turn that off, is that changing the sound in any way? doesn't seem to be. If I adjust the level, is that changing the sound? Not at all. If I adjust the level on bus one. Ah, okay. So now we're getting somewhere, right? Now we know, and this is the way that my mind is processing, this level and pan, and you can see there's a very small little line here, is actually separate from the other modules that we have, this filter cutoff and then this distortion section. In fact, there's even another line that's separating these two. So I wonder if I changed the drive. No, that's not impacting the sound. I need to probably turn the bus on. And then it is. All right, so at this point, we know that the signal is somehow coming into bus one. It's not coming into bus two. So what happens in the signal flow before the buses? Well, it's the oscillators. It's our sound generators. And we can see that with this instrument, we have two of these oscillators turned on. So I'm just going to turn off oscillator two. So we're just working with oscillator one. And I'm going to go through, look at these different controls until I see something that corresponds to bus. And there I see it right here on the far right. So we have a level, a pan, and a bus. And the bus is set all the way to the left, which actually says 0% there in the control. But clearly, it's being fed into bus 1 because we have control over it from here. So I'm wondering if I have this level all the way down to the right, or excuse me, to the left, if I have this down to 0 on bus 2, and I adjust the bus position, what's going to happen? Let's just listen. Ah. Okay, so this control is actually determining how much of the signal feeds into bus 1 versus how much of it feeds into bus 2. So if I'm all the way to the far right, it's going into bus 2. If I'm all the way to the left, it's going into bus 1. And then we can clearly turn on some of these things here. Oh, okay, we have a low-pass filter. 
adjust the signal flow here if we want this distortion and lo-fi unit coming before the filter or after it. Let's really crank it. But if I turn it off, we still have that control there. So the next question I'd have is, well, how can I send the signal from bus one into bus two? Oh, look at that. We have a send control right here, but this is kind of interesting. So we'd expect that if I'm sending from bus one into bus two, that we should be going from a lot of noise to silence, right? Because we have the level all the way down here. That's actually not the case. All right, so this isn't a straight send. What I'd actually have to do is turn the level off of bus one, send into bus two, and then bring level up here. And then I could go in, I could add some kind of like different filter here. I could put in like a format uh, and put the resonance way up. level down bring our level down but if I leave some level here in bus one we're actually going to be getting a split of the signal so turn this on So very interesting and what I'm figuring out about this instrument immediately is that what really gives this instrument its character and what you can really do to push it further is to mess with how much signal you're sending into these various buses from your different oscillators it really means that you're going to be able to get a very uh, diverse range of sounds but for now I'm just going to start going back to breaking down the preset I've learned a lot about the bus scheme something I would definitely experiment with more when I'm making a sound from scratch so we should be back to where we were just need to bring this pan back, bring the stereo back, which actually has no impact when this is turned off. All right, cool. So the next place that we need to go is to our modulators. And we can see that we have a whole host of modulators from Ah, aptly named the modulation page and then there's also the mod matrix which is something I've talked to you guys about before if you find the mod matrix that's where you want to go to turn off all the various modulations uh, the destinations and the sources so we can see that in our LFO page here we have a couple of different LFOs turned on LFO 1 and the vibrato let's just turn the vibrato off go back to LFO 1 and we could just go in here and turn all of these off but that's not really initializing the patch. Instead, what I want to do is I want to see where is LFO 1 being routed. We can see LFO 1 is being routed to oscillator 2 cutoff, as well as oscillator 1 cutoff, oscillator 2 resonance, and then the master panning. So let's start with the master panning. Okay, we can hear the signal going from left to right pretty slowly. That's because the speed of this is on 4 to 1. So that's 4 bars. And if I go in here and I start to adjust the depth, ah, if you're looking closely at the pan knob, you can see that we're getting visual feedback on that. So there's a few ways I could turn this off. Uh, if we think back to what we were doing in Serum, I can actually right click here and I can clear all, or I could just as easily go in and I could choose this and just select off. And by selecting off, you now see that that's defaulted back. I can go in here turn this off, whatever. I can leave some depth. It doesn't really make a difference because it's not going anywhere. Uh, and then let's move on to the other ones. All right, we have LFO1 going to oscillator 2 resonance. All right, so that should be right here. Uh, this time I'm going to go in and I'm just going to right click and I'm going to choose clear all. All right, so anything that has been added to resonance would then be turned off. We can see how in this case it does default it back. We can go into the cutoff here um, and we can again see that the only assigned modulation is from LFO1. We can clear that out. And now let's come to um, oscillator one 
filter cutoff. And the reason I'm showing you this is because there's two things controlling it. There's an envelope, envelope one, and that's what's currently visible, but there's also an LFO. So how would I be able to go through and visually see the uh, depth that's been set? I actually right click, I go into assign modulations, I choose LFO one, and then we could see, okay, if I want to adjust the depth of that, I can do it, get that visual feedback, come back in, see what's going on with envelope one, check out the settings on envelope one. And there you have it. So in this case, when I go in and I choose clear all, we're going to see both envelope one and LFO one wipe clean here on the cutoff. And we can see that like so. All right, so now we have a few more things that are still clearly being modulated. I see little dials here showing us the depth. So I'm curious as to know what it is that's controlling those things. And it looks like it's the morph X and the morph Y. And those are actually what's going on here in this master morph section. And so I could actually assign a MIDI controller to uh, adjust that, but I don't get to see what's being, you know, assigned there. Uh, I actually have to either go in and clear it out manually or just like right click. So I'm just going to right click and I'm going to clear that. I'm going to clear that. And all we have left now is um, morph Y is controlling oscillator one's morph Y. So it's controlling this up and down here. And I don't really need that, so let's just go in and clear that out too. All right, so now we have a filter acting on a saw wave, and this cutoff is turned way down. So I'm just going to go ahead and bring that up. And now all we should have, I'm going to turn off envelope one since I'm not using it is our saw wave. Let's go in here and change this to create our gate message. Ah, see I have some resonance turned on. Let's get that off. Hmm. But for some reason, this still doesn't really just sound like a single buzzing sawtooth wave. And that's because this has clearly been stacked. And not only that, but the octave is down too. There we go. So I need to figure out how is this stacking occurring? We have multiple sawtooth waves that are slightly detuned from one another. If I'm looking down here at the bottom, I'm not seeing any voicing controls. When I come up to the top, however, this is where I start to get those. So I see that we have this thing that says three keys. And I'm wondering if we're in poly mode, three keys, what happens if I hit a fourth key? So here's key one, two, three. Ah, when I hit that fourth key, it cuts off the first note that was played, so. It's never allowing me to hit more than three keys, but we do have this unison that's been set up to four. So what's that telling? That's telling me that we have a stack of four sawtooth waves, because we only have oscillator one turned on, slightly detuned and pushed a little bit into the stereo field. So if I bring this back to one, So I can still hit three keys, but we now do just have our buzzing sawtooth wave. If I go down an octave, we're now more or less at that initialized state. And obviously I could come in here and hit new and that does the same thing. But I just wanted to show you how you could learn quite a bit about this instrument by taking a preset, stripping it down to the initialized state, but, you know, spending some time taking some detours and really sort of figuring out the nuances of what really is just a basic subtractive synthesizer, but it gives you a whole lot of routing control here from the buses, which can clearly take the sound in a whole different direction.